Hi, I'm Jason Hudson from Tenzig Technology, and today we're going to demonstrate a SAML authenticated single sign on from our Tenzig NOS V0 client. We'll show you how to set up the NOS V client to gain access to a Horizon desktop via a VMware Horizon Unified Access Gateway acting as a SAML service provider. All this will be redirected through a Microsoft Azure SAML Identity Platform service in the AAD and will also demonstrate additional security features by utilizing multi-factor authentication as part of the sign-in process. This is part two in the series regarding SAML authentication and you may remember that we covered the principles of SAML, SSO and MFA in the previous part one how-to video. In that video, we talked about users, IDPs, identity providers, and the SPs, service providers, and explained how they interact with each other and also how the authentication process works between them. We've placed a link to that video in the description below and highly recommend that you take a look at that one first, especially if you're new to the concept of SAML authentication. At the start of the video, we mentioned two entities that play a vital role in the SAML environment, the service provider and the identity provider. In this section, we'll show you how to set up a Horizon Unified Access Gateway, or UAG, as our application service provider, so that our Horizon application on the Tenzig client can authenticate and log in using our Azure credentials. To integrate UAG with the identity provider, you must configure the identity provider with service provider information. Upload the identity provider's metadata file to the UAG server, and then configure Horizon settings in the connection server console. Let's start by logging into the identity provider, which as we mentioned before, is our Azure AD SAML platform. I'm going to launch my Azure portal by searching for it in the start menu. Once inside, I need to select enterprise applications in the services section above. If you can't find the enterprise applications in your list of commonly used services, then go to the search box above, start typing enterprise, and you'll soon see it in the list. If I click it, then I'm presented with a list of managed applications inside the Azure AD that can be set up to use the Azure tenant as their identity provider. If we scroll down the list, we can already see a VMware Horizon UAG set up as a service provider, as this is currently used for our live environment. So, for the purpose of the demo, we'll create a new VMware UAG service provider and take you through the steps required to get it ready for use with this AAD identity provider. To set up a new application, we need to click the new application symbol at the top of the screen. Once this is loaded, you see a list of popular platforms and applications to choose from. A quick way to find the specific app you're looking for is once again, to start typing the name of it inside the search box. If I type VM, we can see our UAG appear in the list below. Let's click this and you'll see a new window appear that gives us the opportunity to change its name. I'll leave the standard default name as is and then tag on the words hyphen Tenzig demo just to differentiate it between our existing live application and this new one. Once I'm happy, I click create and you can see the status message displayed, indicating that the application is being created. And after a short while, we are presented with an overview of the new application. Notice that you can see the name and any unique application and object IDs that were generated during the creation process. In the Getting Started section below, we have several options open to us that enable us to set up the authentication process between the AAD IDP and our newly created application. So let's take a look at these in turn. First, we have Assign Users and Groups. This is where we set up any AAD users and groups that will be allowed to use this application. This basically means that if enabled, 
users and or groups assigned to this app with the visible option set to on will be able to launch it to potentially gain access to the UAG. Second, we have set up single sign-on. This is where we set up and create a connection between our identity provider, AAD, and VMware Horizon UAG. We'll come back to this in just a moment. The third option is provision user accounts. This is only informational here and is just letting us know that we need to make sure that we have user access inside the Horizon UAG before we can expect full end-to-end -end authentication and access. The conditional access area lets us further refine our security options and enables us to create conditions such as forced multi-factor authentication if our users are signing in from outside the company network, for example. Finally, the self-service option allows your users to request access to this application and also gives you the option to approve or deny the request via an approval service of administrators. Let's go back to option one and assign a user that's allowed access to our service provider application in our Azure IDP. Click on the Assign Users and Groups link inside the box and then click the Add User Group link in the top left. Inside the left menu, click Non Selected and then inside the new right hand menu, start typing the name of the user or group that you wish to give access to. For the demo, I'm just going to select my own user, so I just simply start typing my name, Jason H and then select it from the list. Once I'm happy, I click the select button in the bottom right of the screen and then the assign button that appears in the left hand menu. Now that I've assigned a user, you'll see me in the list. If I click the overview link in the top left, it will take me back to getting started. And if I click Get Started inside the Setup Single Sign-On box, we're taken to the Single Sign-On Options screen where we can see two options, SAML and Linked. If we wanted to use a third-party identity provider with this application, then we could use the Linked option to configure this. But for this demonstration, we want to use the AAD, so we'll click the SAML button. Once inside the single sign-on screen, we need to complete section one first. This is where we tell the Azure IDP all about our service provider and where the requests will come from. If I click on the edit icon, top right of box one, then I can complete the section fields that are required below. Note that these URLs must be entered correctly for this section to be completed successfully ready for when we test the client connection later on. Remember that for this demonstration, we are pointing to a Tenzig UAG server, which I recently commissioned and built for this video. In this section, I just need to fill in the identifier, reply and sign on URLs, and we should be good to move on. To start, we need to click add identifier, highlighted in blue. Notice that the pattern is displayed below to give you a hint. So you just need to append slash portal to the end of your external UAG server's fully qualified domain name. Once we've completed the identifier URL, then we just simply move down and click add reply URL, also highlighted in blue. This time we can take the identifier above, control C it, to copy and then control V it into this box and then append the value slash SAML SSO. We're going to add a sign on URL next that we'll use later on when we show you how to connect from your Tenzig NOS V client via the UAG to gain authorization from this Azure identity provider. Click into the sign on URL box and simply use the external UAG server's fully qualified domain name without any additional suffix like we did above. So for example, this could be https colon forward slash forward slash my.uag.com. 
I'm happy with these entries. So I click save at the top of the form and you should see a success message displayed. Let's close this box and see what has changed in the setup sections. You'll see a test single sign on message box appear. I'm going to click test later because I have some additional setup to do in the VMware UAG before we can prove our end-to-end -end SAML process is fully operational. After saving our configuration, notice that we now have SAML signing certificate details that will be used during our SAML conversations between the IDP and SP. Now, before we move on to configuring our VMware UAG service provider, and ultimately our VMware Horizon Connection Server, we first need to download the Federation Metadata XML to our local machine. The Federation Metadata XML contains information about your Federation service and is used to create trusts, identify token signing certificates, and many other things. So it needs to be publicly available so that other parties can access and consume it. In our case, we're going to make it available to our service provider, our Unified Access Gateway, or UAG. We need to move down to section three, where we see Federation Metadata XML, and then click the blue highlighted download link. You'll be prompted to give it a name and save it to a location of your choice. Notice that the name is already assigned as the name of the application that you specified earlier. I'm storing mine in the XML folder within C colon backslash temp. Before moving on, I just want to set up an additional layer of security for this SP application by adding multi-factor authentication into the mix. I can either create my own conditional access profile and add my app to it, or I can just piggyback off an already existing tried and tested live profile by adding my new app to that one instead. For the demo, I'm going to show you how to add your own service provider app to an existing conditional access profile. First, I'm going to click into the search box at the top of the screen and start typing conditional access until I see it in the results below. If I click the Azure AD conditional access, you'll see a profile appear with the name Tenzig MFA. If I click this, then you can see that there are already two apps that are using this profile as part of their auth process. And if I click the link, two apps included, I can see the apps under the select heading. To add our newly created service provider app to this profile, I click the highlighted blue link below select, and then in the search box opposite, start typing the name of my app, VMware Horizon Unified Access Gateway Tenzig Demo. Once it appears, I need to select it in the list, and then tick the box to the left of it. Now, I move down and click select, you should see it appear alongside the other two apps that were originally assigned. I'm good with this, so I click save in the bottom left and wait until I see the updated successfully message to appear. Now, we're ready to set up our VMware Unified Access Gateway as our service provider. Let's sign into my UAG and I'll show you how to make the connection between the already configured IDP in Azure and our service provider on our gateway appliance. This part of the process is very simple to set up. The first thing we need to do is upload our Federation Metadata XML file that we saved just a few moments ago. We scroll down the advanced settings section until we find the identity bridging settings and then click on the cogs next to upload identity provider metadata. You'll see a red star next to the IDP metadata field and a highlighted blue select link. If I click this, 
I'll be presented with a dialog box to find the location of my Federation metadata XML file. Remember, I saved mine to C colon backslash temp backslash XML. I select the XML file and click open. You should see the XML file name appear against the IDP metadata title. Once I'm happy with this, I click save and we can see the message configuration is saved successfully. Now, we need to go into a couple more settings inside the UAG to enable SAML authentication through to the Azure IDP. We need to scroll back up to general settings, click show edge service settings, and then when it appears, click the cogs next to the horizon settings title. Once inside here, we need to scroll down and click the more link to reveal additional on-screen settings. Notice that we now have an option named auth methods appear beneath connection server IP mode. I'm going to click the drop down arrow and then select the SAML item from the list. A new drop down box should appear with the title identity provider next to a red star. If I click this, then I should see the URL that will point to my Azure IDP. It gets this information from the metadata XML file that we uploaded just a moment ago. This is the location of the secure token service or STS inside our Azure AD IDP that issues our trust assertions to the service provider. If you had more than one IDP set up inside your UAG, then you would also see them in the list. Once I'm happy with my selection, I need to scroll down the screen, click save, and wait until we see the message, configuration is saved successfully. Now, we need to enable SAML authentication inside our VMware Horizon connection server. Once I'm signed into my Horizon admin console, I need to go to settings in the left menu, servers, and then connection servers in the top right. I need to click on my connection server to highlight it and then click edit to get access to the settings. Once inside, I need to select the authentication tab and then click on the drop down box beneath delegation of authentication to VMware Horizon. We want to select allowed from the drop down and then click the manage SAML authenticators button below. Inside the manage SAML authenticators window, I click add and then select the static radio button on the right. Inside the label name box, I'm going to type in Azure AD IDP, which is meaningful and makes perfect sense, as this is who my identity provider is. It's worth noting that this name can be anything you want it to be, but it is mandatory. Now, when it comes to the SAML metadata field at the bottom of the screen, this is indeed mandatory and will contain the actual Federation metadata XML that we saved earlier from the Azure IDP and later imported into the UAG. So what we need to do is open up the saved metadata file in C colon backslash temp backslash XML. I'm just using my default text editor for this. Select the contents with control A, copy with control C, and then go back to my add SAML to auth page and simply control V to paste the XML content into this SAML metadata box. Once I've done that, I need to make sure that the enabled for connection server box is ticked, which should be by default, and then click OK to save this authenticator. Click OK once more and you'll be taken back to the edit server settings window.
Notice that you should now see your newly created authenticator name below the SAML authenticator title. If I click OK once more, then I'm brought back to my Horizon Servers window. Now, we're almost ready to test our fully configured SAML environment. But first, we just need to do one more thing and set up my Tenzig NOS 6048QV0 client so that its Horizon application can make a SAML connection end-to-end -end along the complete protocol chain. Now that the NOS V0 client has booted up, we need to go into the control panel by clicking on the COGS icon on the VMware Horizon Connect desktop. In the control panel, I'm going to click the VMware Horizon client under Applications, and I'll be taken into the settings for my Horizon session. Setting up a SAML single sign-on session from here is really easy and literally takes just a few seconds as I'll show you now. In the general section, I leave the connection type as VMware Horizon and set the server URL to be my Tenzig UAG server address. This should match the external FQDN or fully qualified domain name of the Unified Access Gateway. Remember, we talked about the tunnel external URL in the UAG settings earlier. Well, this is that address. Once I've made those changes, I click the login settings from the left menu, click the login mode drop down box, and select SAML. I'm just going to scroll down and tick clear browser cache. This way, each time I log in during a demo, I get to key in my credentials for the IDP, just so I know it's prompting me for exactly what I expect. And once I'm happy, I click OK, and then close the control panel. That's it from the Tenzig NOS V side, all done. Now, how easy was that? Took less than one minute to configure, right? All we need to do now is click Connect, Wait a few moments and our Azure IDP sign-in box appears with the Tenzig specific company colors. I type in my Azure name with domain and click next. Key in my password and click sign in. I just wait a few moments and I'm presented with an MFA verification window. Remember earlier during configuration of the VMware service provider in the Azure portal that we added our SP to an already set up conditional access profile to make sure that MFA was a condition of sign-in? Well, that's the reason that we now get to see this credentials window appear, just as an extra layer of security. I'll just key in the six digits from my authenticator app and click verify. I'm going to answer no to the stay signed in question. Click accept on my test server disclaimer, and then you'll notice that my horizon resources are displayed. If I wasn't using the SAML protocol and my Azure IDP, then this is where you would normally see a VMware horizon login box prior to gaining access to your horizon resources, including apps and desktops. This shows me that SAML is working as expected, where the authentication process is now being passed off to the Azure IDP when I try to access the VMware UAG. I'll just double click on the desktop JSON W10 personal. Key in my password. Wait a few moments and my Windows 10 Horizon desktop is loaded as expected. This concludes today's session where we talked about user security with SAML, MFA and SSO. We showed you how to set up the Tenzig NOS V0 client to gain access to the Horizon desktop via a VMware Horizon Unified Access Gateway or UAG acting as a SAML service provider. All this was redirected through a Microsoft Azure SAML identity platform in the AAD. And we also demonstrated additional security features by utilizing multi-factor authentication as part of the signing process. 
Remember to click the link in the description below to check out part one of this two-part how-to series on SAML authentication, where we covered the principles of SAML, SSO and MFA. I hope you enjoyed the session and remember if you have any questions regarding this or related topics then please contact your Tenzig team or visit the website at www.tenzig.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.